Hey, what's up, it's they, and you're on Cloud9. Nine. Easy. That's like my favorite topping to put on anything. Man. It's my favorite dip. Yeah, nine. I'd have to give it a nine. Honestly, I'd say guacamole is probably my weakness. And uh, yeah. I, if you put it in front of me, like I just eat it uncontrollably. <laughs> and I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's guac's like definitely up there. Number nine. Nine. Mine, yeah. maybe a ten. Um, what makes for bad guac is tomatoes. Um, anytime somebody puts tomatoes in their guacamole, I think that's a rookie move. Also, the worst guac that I ever had was it had white onions in it. Like just white, straight up yeah. white raw onions. That's gross. Like, that's yeah. disgusting. Why would you do such? Somebody thing? put um, what was it that I had the other day? Corn in the guacamole. Oh, that's a that's terrible. You should be jailed. <laughs> Toco Madero. They put the pomegranates in, it in that joint. That's actually delicious. That's some Hollywood. That's some Hollywood shit. Pretty good. Yeah. That's like an eight and a half. That's a childhood for me. Like just this, I can still sing the theme song. Oh. That, ah, that's, that used to be my joint yeah. from like Amanda Bynes. You had Kenan Thompson in that joint. You had Kel. Like you had all like the all star cast in that joint. So yeah. eight, eight and a half for me. Nah, I'd give it, I'd give it an eight or a seven because I think that we, there was like a peak period. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, Amanda, Kenan, like those type of people. But then there was also like kind of a, a, a little wind down where like Nick Cannon showed up. <laughs> Everybody started getting a little bit older. And it just Cannon wasn't, it, it wasn't quite as funny. Like you're just like, okay, there's like three seasons where you're like, all right, I'm not sure if I can really mess with all that like that. So I like, would say post, post all that Nick Cannon is funnier than all that Nick Cannon. Yeah, he, he kind of ruined the show for him. Uh, the Grammys, I'll give it a, right now, I'll give it a, seven and a half number one I it's, it's high for me because we haven't you know been nominated as a group yet and hasn't you know nominated or, or, or won anything as a group so that's like on the bucket list but I'd have to give it a, a couple knocks down because of how pol political it's become I put it I put it out of five because I f I was definitely one of those haters that was like you know they get say oh album of the year and I'd be like really that's that's the album of the year like, that album was the best album of the past year and I, my mind would be blown. But I think that they're aware and there are so many artists that are bringing awareness to the Grammys. I think that it still has a chance to like, you know, just continue. I see them evolving, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, it's like the best place that you see performances as well is like on the Grammys. Yeah. So I, I give it a five. I think that it's like gonna move into a better direction. It does let you know if people can perform live or not. You know what I mean? Just gotta bring the sauce. Like super long, yeah, that's like a two. What are you doing? Like you can't, you can't, you can't talk on the phone. You can't fumble in your purse. You can't open a door. Right. Yeah, I think they're just an inconvenience. Do they don't really look that good to me. At least they, I always think like evil villains, like Cruella Deville, like that type of thing with the long fingernails. So like, it doesn't do anything for me. And then two, it's just like you have a lot of excuses. Oh, I can't open this because of my nails. I can't. I can't do can this because I can't. Can't text because of my nails. Can't text and phone I can't. No, I can't. So it's just like nah. I'm not with the excuses. I don't like the how it inconveniences everything, so I get it like. And then you, you and, and then they come like, oh my nail, bro. like what do you think? Your nail broke. Hello, yeah. your nail's ten Literally, inches yeah, long. Why twenty inches long? Like what are you nah. doing here? Yeah. I can't swim. That's a one. But I no, I'll put it like a five or six. I wish I could swim like that and go you know die, but I don't mess with sharks either. So it's like I don't swim, so I can't really give you anything on that. You know, more power to anybody who does go um, out scuba diving, but. Nah, I'm, it doesn't do anything for me. I, they, there could be a whole hidden city down the ocean. I don't care. I'm just gonna <laughs> stay up here, nice Good and dry, here. and not worry about. I, there's yeah. plenty of oxygen up here. I don't have to worry about a tank. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm good. So yeah, I give it a one. Uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Um, because because of the fact that he's been able to, not only obviously from whatever all the things that he that he did back in the day with Aaliyah and, and Missy and, and everybody that he worked with, but then his ability to cross over and work with these, you know, younger fools, including us, you know, bringing us under his wing and everybody else. There's a lot of other artists that are, you know, our contemporaries that have um, gone and worked with him and he's he's been able to put out some quality music. He's a nine for me. He's my favorite producer, you know, because you never knew what to do. His, his drums were always like just out of this world. He had the craziest sounds, the dopest chord progressions, and he just evolved. He evolved like over the years and always had hits. So he's always been my personal favorite producer, the producer I try to model myself after. So I give him a nine easy, easy nine.